we're in GarageBand, uh, and basically I'm going to make a new project here, and I'll call this Herb 77. And so this is basically what I have here as a garage band. And again, kind of a quick little review is that if you hit the little eyeball, this is where you get all your beats are at. So let's say that I want to make a beat. I like that one, so I'll put that one up there. And I find something contrasting because, again, uh, I'm assuming that all the music that you like is basically uh, music that keeps your attention. Uh, even that little the, the Hannah Montana song we played today there. Was there some contrast going on? Yeah. That, I think that's one reason why that one particularly worked. So we got on here. We got two measures. Let's do the 16 beats as we talked about before. And now we got an A pattern and we got a B pattern. And if I want to copy this, I hold down Option on the typewriter. And then I drag this over there, and then now I got an A B A pattern going on. All right. And then let me hit reset. Let me change things up a little bit. I'm gonna just go find a shaker or something like that that, that adds some contrast coming in there. And so even if I do the, I'm gonna do the option copy. Even if I do the shaker every other other measure, it's gonna give some contrast going on with that. Hit reset, and then if I want to. Uh, do something else. Now let me let me show you this here. This is actually pretty cool here. Is that I'm gonna hit plus. I'm gonna do a software instrument. And on here I can pick some sounds. Let's say I'm I'm into uh, some synth sound going. All right. Say I like that sound there. Let's say though. Let's say I want to be like craft work. Let's say I want to tweak it around a little bit. This is what you can do in GarageBand, is that I'm going to hit, over, under here it says details here. We'll click on that. So here are basically the sound pads that, that GarageBand is using. So I can pick different things on here. And uh, let's say I want to go through there and say, all right, I want that to be a mini lead. And I can hear, I can hear what it's, I can sample and see what it sounds like. All right, I take the compressor. Let's say I get that to, uh, to Put a tremolo on. And see how I'm, I'm, I'm basically, basically the stuff I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm making my own synthesizer, basically, on here. So you can come, if there's sounds you don't like, you can come in here and make your own sound up. That's probably a little bit too much. sound before. Okay, so now I got me a new sound, and what I can do is I can say save instrument, and let's call this Herb Synth 2. And now I hear the side, I got my synth here. So I, here's some other synths I did. So now I got my own sound. And instead of doing the patch chords over there on that analog synthesizer, I'm just doing the same thing that's here. So, uh, you know, if I wanted to come through just for fun, let me record a beat with this. I recorded myself my own synthesized line on there. Let's do let's do another thing. Let's say I, I do another one. I create and let's take a piano sound and let's see what I can do with a piano sound. So I'm just going to find a, just a regular grand piano and so let's see what I can do with that. All right, I take the compressor. going on. 
on there. Let's say I want to put some. Uh, Put a phraser on it. So you can make a piano sound something that's totally uh, brand new in a lot of ways. Is that like a piano anymore? That's a new timbre. That's a new tone color that you got that you can use. And again, let's say this: that everything you've heard is the same drum beat, same synthesizer out there, and now you're coming up with your own synthesizer sounds. Is that going to be some contrast? that's different than the stuff that's out there? Yeah. And so basically, really, on here, the sky's the limit in a lot of ways. <laughs> Because that sounds a little bit different than just a straight one. Let me put a little echo in there. If I put a lot in there, that's probably too much. Reverb. And so if I want to say that as her piano, now I've got my own sound in there as well. Okay. Any questions about how to make a uh, make your own synthesized sound yourself? Basically, all you do is you pick on the the, pat, the, the sound that you want, and then you hit details. Then you can tweak it, and then you can save your instrument as whatever you want to call it. And that way, you have that as your own sound. This is so easy in comparison to the old days, taking patch chords and soldering things together. Here I just pick, okay, well I want, let me try to overdrive, and let me make the drive a little hotter, change the tone. That's definitely something that's different. I haven't heard that before. It may not be great. And uh, you just have to spend some time to make your own sounds, and you can make something really cool uh, coming out of that. Any questions on that? Okay. We talked about looping before, also. Is that once I make, uh, let, let's say I want, I want to make a own beat, I don't, that melody wasn't that good of a melody, I'm going to take care of that. Let me, let me say I want to make an ostinato. You guys know what an ostinato is? An ostinato is a repeating bass line, it's over and over and over again. So if I do. If I had that beat, let me record that. Let's say that I have that as, uh, so now let me loop that and see what happens. So I can loop that for that, that time period there and get rid of that there. Repeating pattern over and over again. All right, now it's repeating. Okay, see how that works? And ostinatos are a really good way to have something that, that's grounded in the music that you make. Is if you repeat the pattern over and over and over again, it gets into your head. It gets to be catchy. But one problem with that, make sure you change it up a little bit, change something else up a lot to keep it where it's not boring. And that's the thing that we're always constantly fighting. Compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. Yeah, that's some crazy sounds there. Okay. Let's see what it sounds like. 
high distortion. This here is your mix. So if you're going to mix it down to a CD, this is where if it gets too much in the red, like, like it did there. Right, that's too much in the red. So if you notice here, I always had to pull this down to like 45% like of the full volume. And you want to try to make this as hot as possible without distorting. Once it goes into the, uh, for the, from the orange into the red the whole time, that's too much. That's too much of the distortion. Let's see if it, let's see if it distorts now. So I, I pull that down a touch, it, it won't be as bad here. So that's how you work on your mix here as well on that. Any questions on this? One other thing, because I know you all care about your time limits on here, is that if I hit down here, there's a little time. And so I can move this over here. All right, now I know I've got 25 seconds of music. All right. Let's say I want to double that. Let's say, there, Herbert, I got, I got I need a minute's worth of music real quick. All right, and you got two minutes. You got 30 seconds to do it. Okay, that's easy. Let's highlight all this jazz here. Hold on, option in the typewriter. Bam. There it is. So now I know I got 50 minutes, 50 seconds of music. Right, if I need to. And this this here is kind of a nice thing that you can highlight. You make it small enough where you can highlight everything. So if I wanted to, I could highlight all that if I wanted to, and do the same thing. And now, I've got almost a minute and a half, a little over a minute and a half of this stuff going on. Okay? Any questions about that?